Oh, for those man, of you, I'm excited. For those of you tuning in all weekend long, first, thanks for joining us, of course. And secondly, you're talking, you're hearing from an epiphany hater right here. Beat downs! <laughs> Beat downs! Come on! Somebody stop them! Kill them before they can cast <laughs> it! Ew, ew, that hand from Ikawa was icky, and this one's not much better, but, you know, at least, at least you can play things. You can play things. Probably going to send yeah. a land back, keep, I don't know, if you're going to five cards, I don't know exactly what you're looking for here. I guess I'll say that. You're not thrilled with this seven card hand, and he is going to five. Okay, interesting. I'm a little bit surprised by that, so we'll see how this does unfold. This mono green, excuse me, this mono white deck, Ailey, brought here to beat mono green and epiphany. Hmm. It did really well in some online events last weekend, kind of out of nowhere, and right? On various online circuits. And that's that's why we're seeing it here a little bit kind of late in the game of like, whoa, what is really going on with this model white deck? I'm curious. Oh man, I, I really love it. I think it's such a rad build. It doesn't play Elrond's Epiphany, so please do not be alarmed. This is disregard. an Epiphany free zone yes, for this disregard. round at least, for this match. So let's kick things off here. Pretty nice one, two, three punch for Ikawa. Has to find the third land though, but uh, could get off to a flying start. On the other side of things, Paolo looking pretty darn good too. Would love to find a third green, but finds Faces Haven. Come on, buddy. You got to do a better job than that. Be green. Yeah, Paolo's hand is pretty darn nice though because he's got some removal spells here in Blizzard, in Blizzard Brawl, excuse uh -huh. me, that can kind of contain these creatures. Second, Werewolf Pack Leader, not ideal. You mentioned looking for that other source of uh, green mana, but something to do in the interim. Uh, and that's, again, contain Luminarch Aspirant oh, yeah. uh, and other creatures. So that's what Brawl is so great at doing. And that card is really powerful able to scale up nicely and i think that's one of the benefits of this mono white deck ikawa and sato ray sato that is believe that they are pretty well positioned in this field because their mono white deck isn't like a typical weenie deck where it just kind of runs out of steam this deck grows it gets nice and chonky so let's see who beats or who wins in this battle of the chonkers here yeah one of the things you can do against green is you can fly over them and maul the skyclave is going to help assist in that Again, you're not looking to play a long game against these green decks. Green plays a better long game than white mm. does in this format. Uh, when we're talking about cards like Ranger's Class and Faces Save and a Werewolf Pack Leader drawing cards, the idea here if you're mono white is they can't interact with everything. They don't have that much removal and they don't block that well against your flyers. So that's kind of the game plan right now. So if you're a Kawa, you're hoping that, that PVDDR doesn't have that much removal this game. I gotta say, I think removal is the the area that the green deck certainly does a little bit better than the mono white deck. At least uh, uh, pre at least pre board, they don't pre -board really care indeed. what you're doing. <laughs> yes, pre board indeed. Now things will change after sideboard. I'm excited to see how both players do sideboard for this particular matchup. You have to imagine that Ikawa has tested this matchup a ton and felt like it was good enough for him to bring this deck to the tournament. So this again, really really compelling stuff with no epiphanies involved and just mono creature decks here. <laughs> Luminarc Aspirant takes to the skies, wielding them all of the Skyclaves. Getting in there for a big chunk of damage, down to 10 goes our reigning world champion. Blizzard Brawl will clear out one of these creatures here. Well, and, uh, one is nice. Two is pretty fine. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do yeah. it again. One more. Could, this is what we. Could, this is what we like. Beat down. You could certainly make an argument for it. Clear off this battlefield. You're you're against an, an opponent who Mulligan to five as well. Yeah. So you know that Akawa probably doesn't have too much gas left in the tank. You can see Akawa kind of sh shying away from the screen, saying, "Please don't have it." <laughs> it's like, please don't. Please don't. Yep. But you uh -huh. do. A knowing nod there. As uh, we're gonna draw two cards. This is another thing that this deck does really well. Look at them go. Oof. Oh, Stonebind is familiar. You're great on turn one. You're a good boy, but nothing's being exiled right now. But here, have a hammer. Maybe that helps. Okay, okay, okay. Inscription of Abundance is going to make pretty quick work here of this pooch. But let's see where Paolo goes with this turn. He's got a few options available to him. Yeah, and all of them are pretty darn good, but I think we're going to see Inscription kind of close things out here. If you take a look at Akawa's mana as well, there's no Faceless Havens running around there right now at all. If you're playing against Model White, you don't really have to concern yourself with anything like Haste. So, clear for takeoff here, I would mm -hmm. say. 
I'm just gonna kick this. You know, it's fine. There goes your doggy, and there goes your face. Doing exactly what it wants to do, keeping control of the battlefield, killing absolutely everything. And now we go to sideboards. Sideboards is where things are going to get a little bit interesting. So on Paulo's side, remember, he's got four copies of Blizzard Brawl main along with three copies of, inc of Inscription of Abundance. Pardon me. Those are the ways for him to interact with the creatures. And you saw exactly how powerful those cards were in game number one. Their power will still be there for games two and potentially three. However, for Ikawa, things do get a little bit better here. Brutal Cathar, very good card in this matchup. And we can't forget about... And it's crazy to say this, an oldie, in quotes, but a goodie in Skyclave Apparition. I mean, this card set the world on fire when it was first printed, making mm -hmm. a huge impact in a ton of formats. Really good card in this matchup here as well. So things do get better for the mono white player here. Skyclave Apparition, Yorion, big old sky noodle. You know, it seems so this. long. Oh, it seems so existence. long ago. It, it seems does. so long ago. But I, I must say, I, I, I much prefer the standard meta as it is right now. People still experimenting, trying to find the best deck. And uh, these two, Mono Green and Mono White, have been doing exceptionally well on the various ladders. So it's no, no surprise to see it here. Maybe Mono White was a bit of a surprise for players, but Mono Green certainly not. Well, you're trying to take people by surprise with, with Mono White a little bit here. Again, those results that we saw in Magic Online, the SD Tour, and some other online avenues kind of came out of nowhere last week. So, you know, just seeing that deck kind of do well that late in the game, I I'm sure some players were wondering, is this actually legit? Is this a real thing? Is it kind of a <laughs> meme? You know, what's going on? Do I want to do I want to risk my world championship on this deck? Because, look, it was winning tournaments, and I mean, not just winning, destroying tournaments. So, I mean, this deck is good. Didn't look great that last game, but we're also talking about game five, right? This hand, look at this. I mean, we got Redain on turn number three. That'll slow you down. Oh, yeah. Nice Snowlands you got there. It would be a shame Absolutely. if they came in tap. <laughs> <laughs> a decision here between Sculptor of Winter number two or the Werewolf Pack Leader. Also Tangled Florahedron in hand, but doesn't seem to be a consideration for PV. Sculptor's going to hit the board. And here comes a tap land. Let's think about what's a little bit different this game, too. Uh, on PV's side, where are those fight cards? Where's Blizzard Ball? Mm. Where's Inscription? Nowhere to be found. His hand right now is just creatures, creatures, creatures. And creatures are good, don't get me wrong. And these creatures are big from Mono Green. But Ikawa's got disruption, and his creatures look like they're going to live for a little while this game. And if that's the case, I say advantage Ikawa. Certainly looking that way right now, especially with that fateful absence in hand. Able to destroy a creature? Sure, it gives your opponent a clue token, but it's quite a nice answer for basically everything in this format. Yeah, I'm curious if he's going to go this route with casting this removal spell on Sculptor of Winter right now. It looks like the answer is yes, so have a clue. <laughs> Follows it up with an Usher. Usher of the Fall, and Intrepid Adversary is going to hang out in hand. The longer the game goes, the better that card gets. So Ikawa's going to hope to add more to the battlefield before that is his play. Now, a decision here between Old Growth Troll or Kazandu Mammoth. Which way are you leaning? Well, that troll is kind of attractive, but it looks like we're going to go with the Mammoth. I think one thing that's kind of interesting about what we saw last turn is that the best way to use the removal spell that you drew. Well, it doesn't matter, because <laughs> when you draw a brutal Cathar to that's clean things up, that's oh. a draw indeed. <laughs> Love it. Brutal Cathar, right on time, gets that mammoth out the way, and beatdowns be coming. Yeah, now oh, see, there's a fight spell. There is a fight spell. However, no creatures on the battlefield mm -hmm. alongside with this fight spell initially. Looks like we're going to see a werewolf pack leader come on down. But again, this is kind of the recipe, right? Which is you're just trying to bowl over your opponent, snowball all the way down as best you can. Looks like we're going to see inscription right now by Paulo. Yeah. Let's get some fights in. This 3-3 is going to take care of this brutal Cathar. Get the Kazandia Mammoth back. Timely. Those fight spells in this matchup cannot go understated just how good they are. Yeah. Another Usher of the Fallen off the top there. Yoshihiko Ikawa is going to the Intrepid Adversary. We'll be able to pay once for a Valor counter, pumping up the team. And we're going to see some more beatdowns. I like it. Straightforward enough attack. Your flyer's, of course, going to come on through. Usher the following is going to trade with one of these. Looks like it's mm -hmm. just going to be the Mammoth. I like the aggression here for Mikawa. Just keep applying the pressure. Going to replace that Usher with a second one. 
Hellbent now, and Essica's Chariots, one thing that uh, Redain does is makes all the 4 CMC non-creature spells cost more, so no Chariot for the time being. That one's going to cost 6. Looks like you can go to the Troll, you can hard cast Florahedron if you'd like, but Chariot would have been a great thing to play this yeah. turn. Those cats would be loving the opportunity to block, but no Moss. Now, I don't think that Pack Leader is attacking, so big draw here. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's actually a really good draw if you're a Kawa. <laughs> and you this can put that... This is just going to make... <laughs> this is just going to put the pedal to the metal now, as Lumilog Aspirant is going to keep buffing this team. Yeah, you can put the counter on the adversary, you can put the counter on the flyer, right? That's your decision to make at this juncture, is if you want to put it on the Intrepid Adversary, or if you want to make Redain into a 4-5 yeah. by putting a counter on to it. So Library a little bit of a decision. Fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And... And then also, uh, sure, the Fallen, do you want to attack with that and boast this turn or not? You can also put the counter there if you want to, because that can make it so it trades with Old Growth Troll. So, okay, let's get busy here a little bit. Follow going to sacrifice his clue, get information before making his block. Outland Liberator. All right, so it's pretty good against the Mall of the Skyclaves, which is unfortunately nowhere to be seen right now, so... Well, or fortunately. I'm not sure if it's fortunate or unfortunate <laughs> right now, but things aren't looking great here for Palo in game number two as Yoshihiko Okawa is running away with this game with his mono-white weenie deck. It looks like Old Growth Troll wants to trade. Boasting is done. Okay. Need a fight card for Palo, I imagine. Yeah. Oh, hello. you called it hello. All right. That's, hey, that's where it starts. Okay, now, what is the target here? That's what I'm curious about. I have to imagine we're thinking Redain. There's three troublemakers on this board. One pumps everything, one yeah. gives everything counter, and one makes everything of yours cost more. Yeah, you get Redain out of here. Now you can mm. play one, two, three, four, five, six. You can play both your spells. You can play Chariot nice. and and Outland Liberator, and then it's on a... Whew, now it's on a Kawa to draw something juicy. Yeah, because now with the skies taken care of... Mm-hmm. Palo can get his way back into this quite easily. Oh, hello! Good, Good start. Grief. That's a great draw. Skyclave Apparition to be able to take care of anything on this battlefield, barring the tokens. Let's see where this goes. Good start. What is the problem on this battlefield? It is going to be Essica's Chariot, so no okay. token copies for Paolo. Aspirant trigger. Looks like we're just going to make a token into a 3-3. Sculptor of Winter, not the most impactful of draws right now, I would say. It's better than drawing a land, of course, but... Paolo's draw step has a much higher ceiling than that. Yeah. I wonder if he can... I mean, he can't, right? He can't attack here with a pack leader to draw a card. A little, risky, a, little, a little riskier from, than, than I like, but Paulo's, Paulo's feeling it. Yeah, sure. Get busy living or get busy dying, I guess. Let's swing. Okay. Yeah, how do you want to block if you're Paul, if you're a, if you're a Kawa? If you want to block at all, because you are sitting at 20. Yeah. And you got to be thinking about... Um, some of the fight spells. Well, I think I, there's a part of me right now, if I'm a Kawa, my thought process here might be, look, if you do a fight spell, I'm kind of dead. Yeah. Right, because I can't really beat it. Like, if you're going to blow up my... If you're going to kill my Lumark Aspray, you might kill my Sky Cliff Apparition, make a 4-4. You mm -hmm. might kill the Intrepid Adversary. So if you've drawn Blizzard Brawler Inscription, eh, it could beat. I lose. So <laughs> I'm just going to... I'm just going to assume that you didn't. Good assumption made, as we'll see the trade there between the token and the Werewolf Pack Leader. We're just going to dump the hand here from Paolo, and both players just essentially in top deck mode now. Yeah, and here's the here's the scary thing, though, as both players are in top deck mode. In my estimation, Ooh. as Faithful Absence is a pretty good, good draw, but, but, we are, but, but it is worth knowing that we are in this late game situation right now, so that if you do use Faithful Absence to blow something up, Paolo's going to be very easily be able to draw a card, right? He's got the extra mana to do that. But the, the fear that I have right now, if I'm a Kawa, is... I can't afford to miss on a draw step right now because Paulo's draws are better than mine yeah. objectively because the cards in his deck are more powerful. Oh goodness! That's a example, great a. Mm -hmm. example, example A. Example, example A. Oh, 
Hezekiah's Chariot. Great card to draw off the top of the library. Fateful Absence. In hand there for Ikawa, so he can take care of the Chariot. Should it become a creature next turn? Yeah, this is this is really tough. This is where Mono Green needs to draw... Or excuse me, Mono White needs to draw a flyer. Yeah. It needs to draw something to just fly across for the W and just do some chump blocking before you get killed by these gigantic green monsters. Yeah, because that's the, that's the issue, right? Like, Mono Green has cards like the Werewolf Pack Leader, has cards like Ranger Class, can start playing off the top of the library. Yeah. So the longer this goes, the better it is for Paolo. And, and that's the appeal. That's the appeal of this strategy. And I imagine why Paolo and others chose to play this deck is that, it, look, if I'm Mono Green, I can go all day. My draw steps mm -hmm. are, are super strong. I've got card drawing in traditional ways or untraditional ways like Rangers class. I can do this all day long. Uh, and my cards are so powerful. Where Epiphany is so good is because Epiphany says, yeah, draw the card you want. I'm going to kill you by taking a bunch of extra turns, right? Yeah. Now this mono white deck, where, it try, where it's trying to slot into the format is Epiphany. I'm going to kill you before you do your thing because my stuff is so cheap. And yep. mono green, I'm going to fly over you and interact with you just enough before you stabilize the game. And that's almost what happened here for Akawa. Okay, pack leader. It's quite nice. Let's get that down on the battlefield. Faceless Haven perhaps going to be the thing used for the crew. Yep. Nope, no, gonna we're going to grow cats. some, oh, we're yeah. grow some cats, cats, yeah. Because you're good. I, I think you're good if you're Paulo. Right now, you're at eight. You know that mono, when you're playing against mono white strategy in, in kind of a general sense, there's not a lot you have to fear if they haven't crossed the finish line early, right? Because right now you're no. just probably thinking, okay, what, what could they have? Removal spell? Sure. Yeah, sure. They better have removal <laughs> spell. I don't have to yeah. worry about like a hasty gold span dragon or no. anything like that. So it, it, it becomes a little bit more transparent about what Paulo needs to do here. And how he can attack, and it looks like okay. Here, how about some four fours? Yeah, I like this attack because it's also before this uh, this little token here becomes a five five and able to block these mm -hmm. chonkers. So that's one problem solved. Difficult position here too for Akawa. Let's say Akawa takes this eight damage. He says, "All right, I'll go down to four. Well, then everybody's ready to attack next turn. You go mm -hmm. that low. So you want to do some trading and keep your life total high. But if you make a trade like this, four four on four four. That's one less creature there is to block the following turn. So the House of Cards is slowly but surely coming down here for Akawa, unfortunately for him and Mono White fans. Werewolf Pack Leader adding to Yoshihiko Akawa's woes as he finds another snow-covered plains off the top of the library. That's not going to be enough to get the victory here, I don't think. This is just an overwhelming battlefield being built here by Paolo. He's just drawn you know, su superiorly. Yeah, and for Paolo, Paolo drew those fight spells at the right time. Remember, mm -hmm. those are the key cards in the matchup uh, for Paolo because even though his card quality in a general sense is higher than Akawa's, just, you know, card for card, compare to Seekish Chariot to Intrepid Adversary, so on and so forth, what he needs is that interaction because if he's not interacting, he, again, Akawa can chump block long enough and win in the air and win with a card like Brutal Cathar. So when Paolo was able to draw Inscription and Blizzard's Brawl this game, that's mm -hmm. what changed everything. You can see Akawa just deliberating what to do what to do it's going to give the good game to the current world champion and a 2-0 victory for palo on mono green you can see a bit of a wipe of the sweat of his brow there that was pretty stressful